All right, kids, it's story time. Let's try not to make this one as long as the other ones. Yugi Nono, this guy, is a character that I did not feel like playing anymore, period, about a year ago, a year or so ago, whenever all that happened, right? So I'm going about figuring out something else that I want to do besides YouTube. Um, the first thing I leaned towards was doing videography stuff, and uh, that was really fun. Um, I got my feet wet, you know, uh, recording some bands, recording some weddings, you know, stuff like that. But um, it was it was just meh to me, you know. I, I needed some outlet to exp to express my creativity um, other than YouTube. Uh, well, other than um, you know uh, Yu-Gi-Oh specifically at the time. This is before shit show, mind you. Um, so. I needed some other outlet, but I just leaned towards, you know, videography is the easiest. I already have the cameras, you know, I already know how to edit, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a business, you know, uh, you can make tons of money off of bridezillas just wanting their shit to look good, you know what I mean? It, was, it just all added up, it all added up, and it was very lucrative for a minute. But what I'm saying, though, is that it sucked. I hated it. I didn't want to do it. Like, and, I, when, I, and what I quickly realized is that I didn't really want to do anything. I was just depressed. Like... Uh, to give you guys an example of how depressed I was, Sam headlined the Canes Ballroom in Tulsa, which is some place I always wanted to play when I was a teenager, playing music, you know, playing at different bands and all this stuff. That's what we dreamed of, was headlining the Canes and signing our names backstage next to all these great names and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I finally got to do that. Um, not through playing music, but I recorded Sam at the Canes, and I got backstage, and I got to sign my name next to, you know, uh, Lame of God and Vinnie Paul and, like, all these great people, and I just was depressed and did not give a fuck. I didn't care at all. I was that just over life. I was just meh about everything. And that's when I figured out that I just had depression. It wasn't Yu-Gi-Oh. It was just that I didn't want to do anything. Like nothing was making me happy. Like no nothing was. It wasn't, it, does that make sense? It was just, uh, I, I had to figure it out. I mean, I was less depressed than I was when I was pr still pretending to be, you know, in super into the metagame and into Yu-Gi-Oh um, every day. That sucked, by the way, like, you know, having to, you know, talk about cards and stuff that were coming out that I didn't really even care about, including Cyber Dragon, which I was supposed to care about and I wanted so hard to care about, and I just didn't, so... I don't know, I was less depressed as, you know, than that. I was less depressed than that, but I was still very, very, very depressed is my point. And I should have been excited to be where I was, but I just was not. I was not excited whatsoever. Um, Sam, the entire time, like, he's worried about hit playing his set and, you know, his band and all this stuff, and he's worried about trying to cheer me up. And I'm just like, no, it's not cool, it's not cool. I was just that far gone. Then I get a phone call from Jason one day, okay? And Jason's like, hey, I'm moving back to Oklahoma from Vegas. If you guys don't understand the impact of that at the time, like, let me let me explain. I started YouTube in the beginning with Jason, and he hadn't lived in Oklahoma in years. He's been lived, lived in Indiana, lived in Nevada, has not lived in Oklahoma. He's coming back to Oklahoma, and I'm supposed to just pass that up, you know, doing something with him when I'm that depressed and I already don't know what I feel like doing. And you guys don't think I'm going to give that a shot? That's when shit show started, and, like, I mean, we could have gone about it a lot differently. Um, my original plan, my original idea for the show was pretty much South Park's like uh, advertising scheme for their last season. Not this, not this new season, but the last season. And like, I really just kind of clicked with their advertising campaign, which was like cancel South Park. There's nothing for us to make fun of anymore. Everything is an Onion article that you retards keep buying. There's nothing for us to make fun of. There's nothing for us to parody. Everything is a shit show. Pretty much, that's what they said, and that's what I got. That's where I got the idea. South Park's one of my biggest influences. Metalocalypse is one of my biggest influences. King of the Hill, like, I mean, you, if you watch some of these shows, guys, you will get my entire sense of humor because I've just gotten it from watching those shows growing up, and South Park probably being the main one. And I'm serious, guys. When everything reads like an Onion article, those guys have nothing to make fun of. And, like, they're, I feel like that their newest seasons have been lackluster because of everything being sh such a shit show. And that's that's where I got the name shit show from. And um, I don't know what, like, that. so that's, like, my idea. Like, that was my original idea is pretty much, like, to make a show out of memes because everything is such a shit show. There's nothing to make fun of anymore. And the only comedy seems to come from internet memes, which is... It's a bad thing because it standardizes humor in a certain way. But anyway, I can go on about it. But anyways, um, what I'm saying here is that um, 
comedy comes from memes, so I just, it seems to only come from memes right now. So the, the idea of the show was to make a shit show where the only thing that's funny about it is to follow memes along. You know, the memes make up the story because like, I mean, you definitely can write your own jokes in there and you know, we wrote our own jokes in there, but it was most, for the most part, like what's funny besides memes, you know? And so it was kind of, the idea was to make a show out of memes because nothing's funny and everything's an onion article. And everything's a shit show, if, if that makes sense. That was my, that was mine, mind you. That was my original idea-ish, and to make a show out of YouTube, like, in real life. Like, also, like, a fourth wall break kind of, you know, YouTube show, like, you know, that's about YouTubers trying to do a YouTube channel since it's on YouTube. I had, I wanted that element in there as well, because I thought that would be a clever element. But anyways, that was my original idea. Um, I was burnt out doing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. He was burnt doing League of Legends content. He had, like, something like 30,000 subs doing League. I don't remember how many, how many subs he had. I was just shy of 60 at my height or I was at 60 or whatever it was either way um, we decided to kind of get together and try to make something happen you know uh, advertising on our channels get some people moved over to the new channel you know and uh, you know try to make something happen out of that it could I mean it could have been gone about like way better uh, the writing could have got gone a lot better I'm not gonna get into the transition stuff because that's like negligible it's like whatever would like the, the point was just to snipe out an, uh, an audience for the new channel it can go about in like many different ways, like whatever. But like the writing, uh, there's just too many creative differences, like just just way too many. And like honestly, like doing that with Jason is like I, I wouldn't take it back, but it is a regret because like I should have known that like we were too different. He wanted to to do that more like random humor, filthy Frank style, you know, I I, I don't know, outrageous kind of humor and I'm not really about that even though I am a South Park fan I'm, I'm, I mean definitely there's there's points where um, it, it's useful and it can tell a story but that's my point is that you use it to tell a story you use it as a metaphor and a, an analogy for something else not just for the sake of doing it um, I, and to be honest I still don't know what Jason's full you know vision for the channel was um, that's probably why it didn't work <laughs> like, that's probably why there's too there's too many creative differences and like we just kind of like we just kind of butted heads a lot and uh you know and i was still going through my depression at the time so like uh it just it just flat didn't work you know and it's it's whatever you know it's whatever like it, it didn't work i tried something it didn't work whatever you know like it's it's not that big of a deal like and that's another point i was going to make is that you guys you know made that a way bigger deal than i ever did um and that's fine i mean it's just it just kind of that that's what bothered me the most about the whole deal it wasn't people like unsubscribing for me i knew that was gonna happen i knew everything that played out i knew was gonna happen like there's no way that i'm gonna start a you know a new a new kind of channel on a Yu-Gi-Oh channel and expect everybody to just adopt it like fuck no i'm not retarded like i knew that wasn't gonna work the goal was to get people that were interested migrated over to the new channel and to get people that were interested oh like aware like why wouldn't i use my you know almost 60,000 subscriber or 60 whatever you know head start why wouldn't i use that platform to you know get uh, exposure for something else that i'm doing like I, I i wouldn't overlook that opportunity so yeah i probably would have done like the transition a little bit differently but like i said it's negligible uh the writing is really what could have been done better it was just too much like trying to mesh the two different styles together and, uh, you know, like I said, I really don't know, it, 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 it was what it was, you know, it was what it was, and that's what I'm saying, like, it was what it was, and it was something that I just wanted to try, and um, I still have interest in doing, um, in, you know, doing going forward, just with better writing and more, um, I guess you could say my direction, unless the, like, what I'm saying is, like, there's too many outside influences and other things that kind of clouded the, the original vision of the show, long story short, and it, it ruined it, like, in it, uh, kind of took my original idea or what like the it took like the primordial ooze that was my idea that could have been made you know could have been something really great and it kind of contaminated it a little bit but um either way uh i i plan on going forward with it just with a you know different writing uh you know me and jason are still friends by the way i mean the dude was over just what yesterday the day before or whatever um so it's not anything bad it's just it's just creative differences guys that's all it was like i don't know what else to say except creative differences and like we we weren't getting along as well as we could have been and the, the investor was getting frustrated because we weren't putting out enough content fast enough because we weren't meshing very well and it was just kind of a snowball effect and it just it didn't yeah it, it is what it is guys like that's like I said, you guys made a bigger deal of it than I did. So after that, you know, it didn't really work out and stuff. Jason decides he wants to move back to Vegas. So he moves back to, to Vegas and I'm just kind of sitting around like, uh, what do I feel like doing now? Pretty much. And I didn't do anything for a minute. 
And then, um, you know, just for just kind of ponder life and stuff, sat on my money for a little bit and just kind of, you know, enjoyed that opportunity to do that. And uh, I don't know, just learned a lot. But um, anyways, uh, I went, ended up going back to my old job, um, same building, different company. Um, that's what I ended up doing for, for a little bit. But I ended up on the New York City Department of Education account. Um, I worked my way up really fast in the building. Um, I worked my way all the way up to management really, really fast did so in just a couple months because, you know, I, like I said, same building, different company. So I've been in that building before. So it was really just kind of a cakewalk, you know, because I've had a pretty high, you know, position in that building before. So um, it was just pretty much doing my thing and just impressing them. I pretty much walked back in that, build, in that building and just did whatever I wanted and just started fixing things and they just moved me up fast. It was really fun. At least it was really fun until they made me management, but it wasn't making me management that wasn't fun. I actually had a great time being management. Um, um, I even got to meet with my old Tulsa Tech teachers who are directors now, and that's why I'm saying I went the extra mile to try to make that place better, to try to get better <laughs> employees, to get better hires and everything, but that, uh, that's what I'm getting. I want to make this very long story short. I ended up being a management of a different account, of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Michigan, Michigan account. Um, ended up being team lead over there. But um, what I'm saying here is that they upper management and stuff didn't have an interest of bringing back the help desk in the way that it was or fixing that building and getting it back up to speed and all that stuff like I thought originally when I you know started working back up there they won't they are forcing more and more and more of that India uh, mentality um, high attrition throw keep throwing employees at the problem and hope that they'll pick it up with two two weeks training without any IT experience kind of deal putting more stress on the leads and I'm just like trying to fix it it's like no how about this you hire how about I go talk to some people and you know get you some resumes so you can hire these people instead um, you know they weren't really interested in that and uh, despite all the progress I was able to make for them up there in my short amount of time you know writing software and stuff uh, I, I quickly figured out they just don't care they didn't care at all. I didn't get, you know, uh, near, nearly the recognition that I got the last time I worked there. Um, like, not even close. So, like, my coworkers all appreciated me and stuff, but, like, and everyone was sad to see me go this last time, but they ran me off. Like, they, they ran me off. I was not able to make things better, and I'm sorry. I was trying. I was really, really, really trying, but that's what, that's what I realized, guys. This is the good news of the situation is that I realized that I was just a number. I was just what they, how they word it, a company resource. That's, that's how they word it in emails. You're a company resource. Um, so that's all I was. I was just a number. Um, everyone was just, just a number and they were trying to get me as management, to, um, you know, to force people more and more into this box when they were already miserable and didn't want to be there. And I'm meeting with these dead-eyed, like, executive Indian types every single day. And I'm, just, I'm telling you, what finally got me to snap is that they were dead-eyed. That they didn't care. That people weren't people. And that's why I realized, like, I'm not appreciated here. And, like, and that's another thing. In Oklahoma, when it comes to IT, I always get something that I'm, like, underqualified for that I pick up really quick. Because it's easy. Because it's IT and comes easy to me. Or I always get something that I'm extremely overqualified for, and this is something that I was extremely overqualified for because I thought I was getting my was essentially my my boss's old job of from back in the day, but ended up getting something entirely different, essentially just a a, a hyped up babysitting job, um, in other words. And I just yeah, that was that's not what I wanted. Pretty much everything that I've hated about IT and and all my worst nightmares about IT that I had from high school. They're all coming to fruition. Everything, everybody's being more and more compartmentalized. Everybody's being forced more and more into a box. I mean, we, anybody who reads anything or is just aware of the world situation knows this, okay? But what I'm saying is I didn't want to be a part of it. And me writing that software for the DOE desk, I didn't even tell you guys what that software did. Like the agents were so bad, there was a knowledge base that told you step by step how to handle every phone call, but the agents weren't following the knowledge base. So I wrote software that navigated the knowledge base for you so that there was no question about it. In other words, I was helping the problem. And I realized that. And I didn't want to help the problem anymore. I didn't want to manage the problem. I didn't want to meet with these dead-eyed fucking retards every day and tell them the same thing every day just to have them not listen. I was, I was done. And I realized I was fucking happier playing Yu-Gi-Oh. I was happier just being a kid. And that's something I've realized. Guys, you just have to shape your own reality. You really do. You have to shape your own world because everything out there is bullshit. Just be a kid. Just be a kid and be happy. I am more appreciated and more loved on this platform 
making people happy, which made me happy. It was just keeping up with the stupid game, like, you know, every single day that made me unhappy. But like, guys, it was also me taking it seriously. Like, I need to stay on top of this because it's kind of my job now. And, and, and I stopped having fun. That's over. It's, it's all fun. Because I'd rather have fun than work, and I'd rather be a kid than be an adult. So, Yugi Jesus is back, and I smoke weed, bitches. Subscribe! <laughs>